Hello, in today's Solid Edge Tech Tip, I'm going to show you how to do um, cutouts and um, embossing of text onto an object, based a flat object. Uh, so first of all, we'll just create um, an object here. I'm just going to create a rectangle. And we'll go ahead and pull this out. Okay, we have our 3D object now. Uh, you're going to draw whatever you want on the surface of this um, that you want to engrave or emboss uh, in the top of that surface. And then you're going to um, use the cut function up here, cut, sweep, solid, sweep, loft, or normal, uh, to engrave something uh, or basically put a cutout in the top of that object. All right. I'm just gonna draw, I'll just draw a curved line here on that plane. Just use this as an example. All right, and then we'll draw the cross section that we want to use to engrave this line. So to do that, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we gotta put a, we gotta draw something uh, perpendicular to that line. So what I'm gonna do is put an extra coordinate system in here and I'm gonna turn off model geometry selection so I don't have the body keep showing up on me. Uh, click on that guy there and we're gonna do an endpoint. Okay, and then on one of those services, I can draw like a circle. I want it to snap to, uh, turn off my previous snap plane. I want it to snap to this plane, and we'll draw a circle on there. Some particular uh, diameter. <laughs> now, once you have your path that you want to uh, have the cut, created on and your cross section, then you go into your cut command and choose one of these options. I'm just gonna do sweep in this case. And there's some parameters you can set and how you want it um, to do that. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this. It's just the basic showing you how to do cuts. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is select your path. Down here in the prompt bar, it's gonna tell you kind of what you're doing. And also in this, it's kind of the process path step selection, cross section, selection, selection, and then it will actually do the sweep. So we'll click on the path and you can hit escape or right click or accept or right click. And then now it's gonna ask you for the shape that you wanna use, the cross section you wanna use to run along there. So we'll click on our circle and you'll see it automatically does it for you. And then it's just having you give it a name and you can right click uh, again, to exit out of that. And that's how simple it is to create an embossed feature uh, in the surface of your plane area or your your object. Okay. Uh, now, we don't have to use um, an open-ended line like that. We can choose any other shape. So, like, like I can do a rectangle. Um, so, I can come in here and draw just a rectangle. Uh, but again, I need to draw a cross section that is sitting on the end of that line. So rotate this up a little bit. We can use the co add a coordinate system uh, function again and drop that on uh, a corner. Escape out of that command. And then again, I can draw a square or a rectangle or some oval shape, whatever I want to go along that path. Uh, let's just do a rectangle this time. And I want to deselect my default plane and choose that one as my plane now. And then I'll put a little square here. Escape out of that command. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Just do a sweep, click okay, select your path, right click, select your um, shape. I 
There you go. So you, once you've selected that shape, and use one of the selection options here to help you choose how you're going to choose that shape to, to cut in there. As soon as you select it and right click or hit it accept, it will automatically do the cut uh, into that surface that half of that shape is drawn into. All right. So that's how you do um, basic cutting of particular shapes into a surface, a 3D object surface. Uh, now we can also emboss text. Um, it's something, so I'll come down here to the bottom and I'll just put some text in. To do that, you go to the sketching tab and down here in the end, you're going to choose the text profile button. This is going to let you type in whatever text you want. I'll just type in the word text. Uh, you can choose any true type font that you uh, would like to choose. I'll just choose Arial Black. And you can bold it as well if you want, or italicize it if you want. You can change the size of it here. You can choose how the image gets vectorized, basically, or the text gets vectorized when it gets placed down. Smoother is going to be a much nicer looking piece of text. Of course, will be, you know, not as many um, edges on it, basically. So we'll go smooth. You can choose letter spacing, line spacing uh, that you want, and as such as well. Okay. They click OK. Um, there's our piece of text. I can go ahead and drop that down uh, now on the screen or on my object, and you'll see it's automatically on that top plane. Uh, you can you can move it somewhere else if you want. But uh, and now to extrude that or pull it down into the surface of that object, emboss it basically. You're just going to click on the extrude button. Um, and on your selection, it'll either pop up the toolbar or I've docked it here as a window. Um, you can choose a different type of objects. In this case, these aren't faces. I'm going to choose a chain or signal, single. And then when I hold my cursor over any of that text, you'll see it highlights it. You're going to select that. And I'm going to choose cut. Um, and then you do a right click. And you'll see it starts to it lets you extrude that text down into uh, that object. You can type in a number if you want. If I want it four millimeters deep, hit four. And you'll see now I have that text um, embossed into my object by four millimeters. Tool can automatically add the dimension. I've got it adding the dimension automatically. You can use that dimensioning now to actually change uh, the depth of that. Let's say I wanted it at 3.5 instead of four hit enter and boom it changes it or you can extrude it manually as well you can click on one of the surfaces here uh, i gotta go back into my filter and turn model geometry on i can click on one of those surfaces and you get the, the extrude pull arrow part of the wheel that you can use and when you do that it will automatically select all the other text surfaces because everything's considered to be coplanar um, at this point, if for some reason you wanted one letter to be higher than another uh, for any reason, you can choose um, in your design intent window here that you don't want to deal with coplanar. Uh, and then when you pull on that, you notice it'll it'll break that association between those other layers and this E. And then I can pull that up and say I could put that at two. Uh, but now once you've done that, you've lost that association. So now if I click on this guy and pull it up and down, you've lost that association for your objects. Okay. Um, but you can, you know, multi-select items by holding down control, pick all of those, uh, and then move them all at once again. Uh, if you choose. Now, technically those were all, I shouldn't say those were broken. It's because I left my design intent. Non coplanar. If I turn that back on again, you'll see those three objects are still considered coplanar. It's just as E is no longer at the same, um, has the same coplanar constraint on it uh, as the rest of them. You can reassociate that with face relate up here. I could tell it I want, um, you know, those layers to be coplanar again uh, by choosing that option and then clicking on those and it will make them that eco planar with everything else again. But that just gives you some flexibility 
and uh, how, what the depth is of certain letters uh, of your text. All right. So there you go. That's a quick example of how you can emboss text and other objects into the surface of um, a 3D object. You can also do this on two circular or curved objects as well. That's a little bit more of an advanced function uh, for doing that, but we'll cover that in a different uh, tech tip.